Matthew chapter 6. Take heed. We're still in well, not Sermon on the Mount. And we'll still come across those these modernistic uh, viewpoints that are quoted. Take heed that you do not your alms before men. Now, alms, according to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, not in Greek and Hebrew, it's a giving of money, things, clothing, to the poor. So, if you happen, like, to give clothing to, uh, you know, like the Red Cross and all that. That's almsgiving. If you see somebody on the street and you give them a quarter, a dollar, whatever you give them, you give them a meal, that's alms. When he sits there and he's got a sign, I, I, you know, I need money, food, or whatever. Whatever you give him, that's alms. Alms is not putting money in a church plate. You know, there'll be some people, and even I've done it to I, I look the word up. You know, there are people who make a big show. That there's the uh, the giving dance in some black churches. You know, they, they play to the hunk up the music and all that. They got the dollar dance. Everybody dances, they put a dollar in. Then they got the five dollar. Then they got the 20, you know, the guy, you know, all the way down to, you know, somebody wants to make a big show, they're giving a hundred or more. That's partial what we're talking about what we're talking about here is here and we know by the bible we know that there are people in jerusalem surrounding israel and they're at the gates they're at the temple they're all over and they're there help me please i'm poor help me i'm blind help me i got leprosy and if you get a group of people you get something they'll get up there and they'll make a big show look i'm giving them money Today, you will find on Facebook and social media, you'll find, here's a selfie of them giving them the, a dollar. Like, <laughs> you know, that's, um, that's what we're talking about now. You take the picture, you celebrate what you do. Now, it troubles me at times because I will tell you, I got six stories of me giving and not trying, and trying to give. And I'm not trying to make it seem a man, like, hey, look what I did. I'm trying to give it as an illustration, and it does. It bothers me that I will tell it as a testimony, and I will pray to God, please, Lord, I am not boasting. And there'll be ways that I'll try to tell the story that won't include me as an aid to this is how you give. To be seen of them. Your sole purpose, when you know, you take that selfie. Men shall be lovers of themselves. That's selfie. You're giving something to that person so men can see you. I'll give you the perfect illustration. And, and Webster says a dictionary word could be charity. You give to a charity. They give you a receipt, and then you tell the IRS, look what I gave. I had a pastor in the church. You know, when you get that receipt and you fill out your form, you're telling the people at the government that you give. Jesus said, don't do that. I believe you, if you record your giving to God on your 1040 form, that's it. That's your reward. And that's what we're talking about. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father in heaven. So if you do something just for show, for others, forget about your reward. And this can be applied to a, a Christian. Therefore, when thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. <laughs> da, da, da. Hey, look what I'm doing. Hey, look! And you, you make a, a video or whatever, and hey, look what I'm doing. I'm helping this guy out. 
the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. That they may have glory of men. So Jesus is telling us that there are men running around in Israel and they're giving alms, they're helping the poor. And the only reason why they're doing it is for their buddies. They didn't have cameras and phones and selfies back then. Can you just imagine what they're doing? Hey, guys, come over here. Look at this. Here. Here's a, a penny. That they made glory of men. Very I say to you, they have their reward. What's their reward? Out of boy. Your tax refund check. But when thou doest that when thou doest on, let thy left hand know what the right hand doeth. So it, it, reach in your pocket, whatever money you find in there, here. That's what he's talking about. And there are some people, even, even I've done it, I'm not boasting. You get a missionary and they take a special offer. I'll reach in my pocket. Okay. In my wallet. You say, how much did you give? I don't know. That thy alms may be in secret. And the father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. And that be at the judgment. For the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. For these people we're talking about now, you're talking about the great white throne judgment, which some people don't believe. There are saved people at the great white throne judgment. When the books are open, look. He gave the guy a coat. No one saw it but Jesus. Well, maybe people, now listen, people could be walking by. He gave the man some food. And if you didn't do it for a show, God would, uh, you know, God would call everybody on what you've done. Especially so if you do it in the name of Jesus. We'll read later on and say, listen, so, if somebody gives you a cup of water. I've got in my prayer book, i got somebody who worked for Dunkin' Donuts came and gave us ice cold water. I've, I've got two men to stop Pulled over the side of the road and came and gave me two bottles of water. And man, I'll tell you, one of them warriors was, was you know was the name brand one. Like, oh, that was that was cool. And he gave that in the name of Jesus. Listen, God wrote that down. He didn't do it for a show. No one knew until right now. Even when I walked into the to the church, I, I was at that time and sat down. And I'm drinking that water. No one knew. Hey, he must have brought it. Okay, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. The hypocrites pray. Know that. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street that they might be seen of men. Now, can you picture somebody in Jerusalem? Can you picture someone? Jesus said there are hypocrites that do this. They'll say in the street corner, Oh, Lord God the Father, blessed be, glory to God. I don't know what they do. I don't know how they do it. But Jesus says they do it. The Muslims, you'll see them chanting to a dead God. The Catholics will call forth the beads and Hail Mary full of grapes. Praying to you is a big mistake. Now, I've been many times in the street ministry. I prayed. 
I stood there. I'm praying, Lord God, please. That may, I know he got mad at me, but Lord, he's mad at you. I pray for his heart. I pray for his soul. Lord, that gospel tract that my daughters gave, that I pray for them. Lord God, I pray for these vendors. I, and you don't know I'm praying. I've sat inside the street. I'm holding a sign. I'm praying. I'm running through my prayer list. They don't know. I've had people come up to me and say, excuse me, sir. And, they, you know, they take me as some kind of religious person. And all that. They'll say, listen, I'm having this. Can you pray for this? I, 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 okay, we'll pray for it. What's the first? And they'll say either them or their other person's name. I'll say, okay, let's pray now. And I will pray right there. And it's not, oh, look at the whole neighborhood. I, I'll pray it loud enough for him to hear me pray. And that guy will look up at you like, I can't believe you did that. I've heard people say, listen, I've asked people to pray for me. And you actually prayed. And then they'll see me, you know, sometimes I, I can't believe some people, they'll get a gospel track from me. Why is Sam written here? <laughs> David, what's up? I write people's name on whatever I can find. I always try to carry a pen. And I'll write their name and I'll come home and I'll put their name in my prayer book. But I pray with them right there because I say I will pray for you. I may forget. I may lose their name. I may give their name on a gospel track out. And I'll go through my pocket. Where is that name? Oh, no. Somebody's going to get a gospel track with that guy's name. <laughs> and I laugh sometimes. I wonder if that gospel track. Let's say Mike. And I write down Mike and I pray for him. And he goes off. And I get that gospel track accidentally out to somebody. And maybe that guy's name is Mike. And he's like, how do you know? You never know what God does. It was something today. Um, I just wrote, it was, it was an event somewhere. I forget even what it was. And I said, wow. I said, Lord, you, you. I can't believe what you, how you did that, Lord. You're a comedian. And it was a reaping and sowing. But there are hypocrites that will pray. Know that. you got to realize not everybody that does something religious is right with God. There are phony preachers. There are phony prayers. There are phony people. Get, just because they put that money in the plate, don't think they're holy. I was amazed. I was amazed. I learned somewhere. I forget where I learned this. You see somebody put an offering uh, envelope in the plate. You say, wow. And that offering envelope could be empty. And they're putting it in there so people say, oh, look, they put an envelope in there. Like, I, I, wow, they put an envelope. He puts an envelope. That they may be seen. Them. See, here's the thing. Be seen. Them. I want people to see me doing. I want people to see me preach. I want to see people pray as I pray. I want people to see me giving. I don't want God to see. I want them. I want the applause. Then we say unto you, they have their reward. What is it? People looking. <clears throat> Hollywood actors and actresses have their reward. People went and paid for their movie or watched it on TV, however. CD, VD, whatever you want to do. Professional singers, they got their reward. They bought the record. They bought the tape. They bought whatever it is. They watched their video. That's it. All these, you know, Christian singers and, you know, whatever classification, whatever denomination, they get up there and they sing, they make albums and all that. If they're doing it just for people to look at them, they're doing it for the applause, they're doing it for the money, that's it. That's their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into the closet. Here we get the prayer closet. Enter thy closet. Now, it does not have to be a closet. Okay. <laughs> You know, I'll go in my bedroom and I'll play in a bedroom, get Jesus said, closet. I've seen some places you couldn't even fit in a closet if you were uh, uh, Tiny Tim, or that, that little with that little green guy, Jimmy Cricket. It does not 
Uh, you know, I take it. Look, it could be any room in the house. It could be your car. It could be anywhere you can get alone with God. Where you can say, "Listen, here I am. I'm going," and they'll say, "Okay, my dad's praying, my husband's praying, my let him be." When thou shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which sees in secret, will reward thee openly. All right, but when ye pray, here's a here's an extra warning: use not vain repetition. Hail Mary, full of grace, the beads. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Ava Maria, as diarrhea or whatever, something like that. After eating Mary's grapes, or something. I got, we got the, the 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 prayer book. We got the the Catholic prayer book. We got the Catholic missal. We got the, you know the uh, Lutheran's prayer book. We've got. God says no to that. God wants a prayer from your heart. Now, I mean, it may be to the fact. Let's say, let's say you want your dad saved, and you know, you pray, every time you pray, and you, and Lord, my dad needs to be saved, and uh, Lord, my dad, my dad needs to be saved. Lord, Lord my dad needs. Lord, please save my dad. That's not vain. That's serious. But if you got a rehearsal prayer that's in print, that's on paper, and you had to memorize it, there have been people in the, uh, they wrote out a prayer. That's vain. It's not coming from the heart. It's not coming from you. It's not coming from your soul. And we get while we're talking about the prayer, we're getting these. You know, we have the National Day of Prayer. What? So everybody can hear you. Jesus just told you, don't do that. How people come to me? You know, make sure you pray Wednesday. Wednesday is National Day of Prayer. I pray all the time. I tell them. I would say, David, pray three times a day. I pray three times a day times 30. I got one request in my life right now, and I could bring it to God. I don't know how many times a day. I've got two children. I don't know how many times I pray for the Lord. I just mentioned them by name. My mom always, Lord, my mom, take care of my mom. And I say it often. And family members and church members and all that. I don't need a nat. Why do you what you a national day of prayer? What you don't pray any other time? Is that what you're telling me? You don't pray for this country? I pray for the president. All of them. They are in in my in my prayer book. And I don't mean say the spirit names. There's the president's names. And I'll say when I come across Donald Trump, I say Donald Trump, his wife, and his children. Every time I realized I didn't know he had a son. I just learned he had a son. I said, Lord, and his children. I don't know. I pray for Obama and his children. I pray for uh, uh, Joe Biden and Joe. And I, he had, I didn't even know he had children too recently. And then I have another spot, the presidents. Because I was saying the other day, I want to, uh, if Ford's still alive, uh, but I know who's ever alive, Lord, the president, and I got him by name. You say you got a prayer book. I got a prayer book. Names. Every day I try to read, you know, one one page. I'm not doing as vain repetition. I'm doing, hey, here's a group of people. Paul would say, I pray for this. I pray for you guys all the time. I pray for you. You know how many churches he said that to? Are you telling me he don't have a list of names? It's not written somewhere names? Unless he had an excellent memory, and they could have. Because back then they could quote the scriptures without a Bible. Vain repetition is something printed. It's something said by tradition. And he says, not you. What do you take that to a Catholic? Hail Mary, full of graves, Alva Mary has mistake, diarrhea. I mean, listen, those prayer beads. Each one of those beads, the colors are, I forget. 
You go around that ring. Each of them is a prayer. I always want to make one of them beads for a living and take a few beads off and then sell them. I really said, oh, where's that prayer book? Mess them all. Now watch this. When you pray, use not the repetition, repetition, as the heathen. All right, there's the, there's the Gentiles. So your prayer to Mary, your Alameda, and whatever, Bologna, your chant of the, of the Muslims, your chant of the Japanese, the chant of the Chinese, and you've heard those. God says the heathen do that. We are not to be like the heathen. When it came to heathen, Paul said, hey, listen, they got gods, and we know those gods are dead. Problem is, in the church, the heathens had those gods alive, called that star attainment. Don't get me going. For they think that they should be heard for much speaking. Now, I was in a church one time. Everybody in the church. Uh, probably everybody. When the pastor called on this one guy, we're like, oh, brother. This guy would get up and pray, and he would have a whole sermon in that prayer. It was long. It was boring. I mean, it's like so when you come to Solomon's prayer, like, oh. All right, Lord, before I, before I do Solomon's prayer, all right, I did the garbage. I got a coffee. Uh, the cats are all taken care of. Uh, okay, I'm all set. Let's sit down. and Because that, like, number's 11. You know, I, I got to do other things. God doesn't want that. It's not a longer the better prayer. It's if it came from the... Now, if it comes from the heart and it is serious like Solomon's, okay. But, for they're much speaking. How much more can you get when it's written in red? And then you get those that God calls on... We, I mean, the preacher calls on and they pray. And they're stumbling, cooping, tripping. And, and it's like, do they ever pray? I mean, if you got an active prayer life and the pastor calls on you to pray, you figure it'd be smooth. All right, maybe there have been some names brought up before the service and you may, okay. Uh, but when they're skipping and jumping and cooping and slobbering, no. Nope. And you got to look at, okay, what's their prayer life like? Sounds very un, un undertaking. Wow, you, that was hard. No, it's not. Be not ye therefore like unto them. Who? The heathen. That can be the church. Paul tells you that. The council in Jerusalem in the book of Acts tells you that. For your father knoweth what things you have need. Not want. Air, light, water, food. You say about clothing. You don't necessarily need clothing. You can find something to cover up the privates. Even that. There are nations where the people, they don't have no clothing. And they're doing perfectly fine. Before you ask of him. And yet, they, the Bible will go on to say, God wants you to ask. Well, he already knows. So don't cop out, well, God already knows what I'm saying. Yeah, but he still says that. Okay, here we go. Now, Jesus is not telling you to pray this prayer. After this manner. After this He didn't say repeat. Did he? He said, this is the manner you should pray. This is a prayer outline. Ready? Here's how you pray outline. Therefore pray ye, our Father which is heaven. Open your prayers to Jehovah. Not Mary. Not Beelzebub. Not Allah, not the holy cow, not the Pope, not you, 
not George Washington, not Donald Trump. Your prayers with Jehovah, who is in heaven. Because there are trillions and quadrillion gods out there, and they're not in heaven. And the Bible acknowledges there are gods. Okay? Number one, direct your prayers to God. Hallowed be thy name. Jehovah Jesus. Because there's another Jesus. These two names are holy that the Bible says you're not to take the Lord's name in vain. So in other words, if you're not to take the Lord's name in vain, they'll say, you know, cussing in Jesus' name. No. Oh, well, yes and no. When you're going to have a prayer, you say in Jesus' name, and that prayer was just vain and empty. It may be a Christmas list. Lord, I want a bike. Lord, I want a, uh, uh, that new sled. Lord, I want a new jacket. Lord, oh, I want the family to get together. Lord, oh, I would love to be warm. Lord, I'd love to. In Jesus' name, amen. That's vain. That's a shopping list. God don't want a shopping list. God does not want a to-do list. Lord God, do this. Lord God, do this. Lord God, do that. When you pray to God, Jehovah, that is a holy name of God who is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, you are speaking to God. There are people that will raise the name of their church. They will raise the name of their pastor higher than God. I know a preacher, his name is on everything. He has missionaries in the church. I support a missionary, and his name is on all the paperwork. That's wrong. Because the country I support, he's not going there. Ready? Not a, a, a heathen prayer, not a Christian prayer, number three. Thy kingdom come. Are you waiting for the kingdom? You're not waiting for a kingdom. This is not your prayer. We have a prayer that is the coming millennium. Uh-oh. So we have a context prayer. Here's the manner to pray. And then what we read next is we have a prayer of the tribulation saints. You, the church, are you going to, to the tribulation? You say, no. Why do I hear Christians, professing Christians, in a Baptist church, I hear them cite them. Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be thy name. Why is that? Why is it their pastor of their church will have them use vain repetition, which we just read before this prayer, you're not to do? The pastor of the church ain't doing his job. We're a Bible believing church, King Jane. Uh, and the people go home, our Father, heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What? What did this we just read? It says, verse 7, use not vain repetition. When you say, our Father, heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that's vain. You just violated what Jesus just said. That's like when you're a little boy. Me. I was a little boy or a little girl. Mama tells you, Leave the cookies alone. Mama leaves the room. You go in there and you have a cookie. Mama said, leave the cookies alone and you grab the cookie. That's the illustration. And then Mama gets yelled at you. You got that surprise look on your face. What? What did I do? And then Mama tells you, I said, no, leave 
the cookies alone. God is going to tell you at the judgment seat of Christ, I said not to do that. What? My past, I'll deal with him when it's his turn. How's that? All right, thy kingdom come. No church Christian is looking for a kingdom. We're looking for a, a trump, not a trumpet, a trump. We're looking for Jesus. Thy will will be done, on, done in earth. What's going to happen during the tribulation period? The Antichrist. God is going to run his will seven years. Not six years and 364 days. Not seven years and one day. Seven years exactly. What's thy will done on the earth now when, when the Jews are speaking? The Messiah is going to go and he's going to die on the cross. And they're going to bury him. He's going to be resurrected three days and three nights. What is will on the earth during the church age? The saints are to go out and preach the gospel. We in the church age today, we preach abortion. We preach, you know, uh, Republican. We preach everything but the God. We are not doing the will of God today. And then they go, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will will be done on earth. Don't kill the babies. Don't kill the baby. We need Donald Trump. Don't kill the baby. We need Donald Trump. And the will of God, Jesus is going on the world and preach the gospel. Which that portion of the scripture in many, many Bibles, that whole section is removed out of Mark. As it is in heaven. So what God proposes in the tribulation period. There's coming a day in heaven. Where the church will be. We're going to watch an angelic war. Between Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels. And we're going to watch in heaven the will of God. We're going to watch Satan get his butt kicked out of heaven forever. And the Bible says of the will of God in heaven. We're going to shout hallelujah. That's the will of God in heaven. The will of God in heaven is the church is going to be called home and we're all going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. That is the will of heaven. The will is heaven. One day Jesus said, okay, mount up. Get on my horse. Let's go. That's a will in heaven. And then we go back to the will of earth. We're going to march back. Jesus is going to conquer his enemies. We're going to pick up Israel. We're going to go to King's Highway. We're going to bring Israel into the promised land like Joshua and Moses. I mean, Moses carried them up. Joshua and crossed them. And can you imagine? You imagine right there. We get there. I always think it's funny. Because, you know, someone's talking about the Holy Land experience. Wait a minute. Stop. We're all on the horseback. We stop. You see this spot right here? Yeah. This is where Joshua put the stone. This is where Joshua crossed. Right where we're going right now. All right, Jesus. <laughs> and it didn't cost me nothing. <laughs> I'm going to go into Jerusalem. Holy Jerusalem. Not New Jerusalem. Holy Jerusalem, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, David's throne. There's the temple, the Levites, the, the, the sons of Zadok. That, and Jesus is going to say, all right, guys, come on over here. And this is where the woman put her, her two mics. Oh, right. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't have to pay for that. And a Catholic didn't tell me. And a, and a Muslim didn't tell me. Jesus told me. And can you imagine Peter? Where'd you catch that fish with the with the coin in? Come on over here, let me show you. Right there. All oh, right, Peter showed me and didn't charge me. <laughs> and we're not gonna have any of the Pharisees and heresies and lies of the, of the Catholic Church and the Muslims and the Arabs. They'll say, this is the scepter. That ain't no scepter. 
Mary was not rich enough for a scepter. She did not have blue. She was poor. She brought the poor offering, the turtle dove. Okay. Give us this day our daily bread. That's not the Catholic book that Baptists have. There's a Southern Baptist church. They will give you the daily bread. And in that daily bread, you open up and says the Roman Catholic Church. And you can't, when you pass a Roman Catholic Church, you got to pray for it. Well, cool. If God answered my prayer, as soon as I pass that place, you'll need a fire department. And I'm sure ain't the tongues of fire. Ooh, how crude. What? Now, let me ask you something. If you What you know about the tribulation period, what would you think the daily bread prayer would be? You've got to have the mark of the beast to buy or sell. You're going to need food. The Jews will not take that mark. There are nations unknowingly helping feeding the Jews. They are taken to the wilderness, a place prepared for them. It says that God is going to smite the dragon's head, and from the head is going to be like a manna-like substance, like in the wilderness. Did you read that? They're going to have to go out there. They're going to have to gather it, and it's not going to melt. The Bible says they're going to go out and gather it, and the Antichrist is going to show up. And it's not that you're not going to get bread because it's melt. If, if you're too late, the Antichrist is going to whoop you. I would think that would be a good prayer for a daily bread, not the Catholic. Now, what about when we move into the books of Acts as the transition? Why would they need to pray for daily bread? Because as you become a Christian, yet, uh, except for after Antioch, when you believe on Jesus Christ, your Hebrew friends, neighbors, family, job, boss, acquaintance, they forsake you. There was a point that Jerusalem church had to take an offering. The home church had to get an offering from the missionary churches to survive. They were selling their properties and giving it to the Lord. What were they were doing with that money? Oh, they were taking care of the widows. They were taking care of people who needed it. And you got to look at the church budget today and wonder all the crap that the church, and very little do they help. And listen, I know people could, listen, I, I tried to start a church in, in Norwich, Connecticut, and you won't believe the phone call. I get people call, my electric bills do, and I like, guess so is mine. Well, you're, you're the guardian light by the Baptist church. Yes, I am. You're going to pay my bill. I ain't know I'm not. I don't even know who you are. Well, if I, if I come one visit to your church, would they leave? No. I say, I get those phone calls. My gas bill is due. I don't have no gas in my car. And some of them I say, all right, let me ask you a question. Yes, sure. And they'll be like, oh boy, here we go. I said, do you smoke cigarettes? Yeah. You got tattoos? Yeah. Do you drink any kind of alcohol? Yeah. Do you have any kind of entertainment things where you buy tickets and all that? He goes, yeah. I said, why don't you stop that, take the money, and get food? Or whatever the bill was. Well, I can't do that. They'd be amazed I'd say something like that. I have been with helping people, and they come. They got these tattoos and all that, and they're smoking a cigarette. Nope. Next. What? I ain't gonna have you get my children. They're starving. Or that. Put the cigarettes away. I can't believe on welfare today and snap whatever you want to call it. They go out and they get the tattoos. What are you doing? Our welfare system is very relaxed. All right, let me move on. So the daily bread would be when starting the book of Acts in the tribulation period, and for the Christian, daily food. Do you realize there are Christians in third world nations? They have to ask God today, Lord God, 
He'll give it to Lori. Lori, where am I going to get my food? There are nations out there. Oh, we need food. Help us. We need food for 15 cents. And then their hamburger goes walking by. Well, that may be grandma. There's always room for grandma in A1 sauce. I, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you have such a stupid God that let you starve. Are you telling me Satan is so loving to you that he will have you starve when you've got hamburger running around you? And that when that hamburger pees, you go there and stick your head in it. I'm getting holy piss. I said piss. The Bible says piss. And I've seen the pictures, and I have been testified by missionaries who, who are in India, been in India. They do such nonsense. You need to take the holy cows and open up a, a hamburger stand. Because I am not going to give you no money. Now, you got a nation where there's no food at all, and you don't have hamburgers walking around. And you got to eat grass. That's your salad. Okay, I will help and send support. I will send you support when a family or your nation, because you are a Christian, like China, if you're caught as a Christian, oh boy, you need, you need daily bread. You need to pray to God. And there's a serious, it ain't a booklet. I mean, are you against devotionals? No. Don't give me a Catholic devotional and better make sure that devotional is a King James. Forgive us our debts. That didn't say pay our debts. Lord God, I got I got that car insurance. I mean, the car loan. I really, Lord, forgive me. All right, time to pay the car loan. Hey, well, I thought if I prayed, you know, for my debt, I figured God would pay for it. And what nonsense church do you go to? I can't believe you said that. There are things that you made an oath, remember that? You made a vow to. you got to stand to it. And you got to say, Lord God, forgive me. You know, in some cases, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. You may have married the wrong person say, oh, Lord God. Give me the patience. Give me the endurance. And I, I know I, I know what your scriptures say. There are times you sin. You got that sin in me. I've sinned today twice. Lord, forgive me. And then you got to forgive your debtors. Now that one is used. At, you know, you owe me money. Well, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I mean, that's that's the wrong one. That's not one in prayers. Uh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, by glory, brother. Forgive us our debt. I don't owe you money because Jesus said the Lord's Prayer. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Do you get loan or mortgage? Yes. All right. On the bill you send to them, write Matthew 6, 12 on it and see what happens. And don't be surprised when they add on that extra fee because you didn't pay that month. You see, some people think God's a piggy bank. God is the forever written checkbook. He's not. There will people come up to you, they owe you money, they'll say, you know, honestly, they'll say, listen, I, I'm so sorry I had to borrow that money. I, I got in a fix and, it, it, I mean, I shouldn't. That was my fault. And if you allow me to pay five bucks, ten bucks, whatever to I pay, thank and you forgive them. They say, okay, I'll take the five bucks. And there may be times they'll come up and say, listen, this week, this month, can I give you what I, I, I can give you? Yeah. You don't be a hard nose. And lead us not into temptation. God doesn't tempt us. The temptation in the tribulation period would be, and it's not God, it's Satan to receive that mark. 
What would be the temptation for a Christian? Giving it all up. Being a Christian is too hard. Man, if I went out in the world and worked the world and did the world and all that, I could pay my bills. There are Christian women who sang in churches, went out for the world and made millions of dollars for the world and Satan. And one of them killed herself in a bathtub. She was a very beautiful woman. Had a very beautiful song. And she ended her life dead. Self-inflicted, not a gun, self-inflicted. Uh, I can't think of the word. Suicide. In her bathroom. The temptations there, all right, if I just quit. The temptations there, if I do it the world's way. And that's what churches are doing today. The church has in in docking itself and fornicating and adulterizing itself with the world and Satan. All are welcome. Would you love to have that sign? You walk in your house and you walk through your house and when you come to the bedroom, above your bedroom door, all are welcome. How about just having that above your outside in your front door? All are welcome. I, I really think you would appreciate that sign. I wouldn't do that in Daytona Beach. <laughs> Ooh, boy, I tell you. But deliver us from evil. That's proper for the Christian. You know what evil is? When you sinned against God. When you done wrong. So what that is, is Lord God, help me overcome these sins. Lord, I know I keep doing it. I'm sorry. Lord, I know I've done it. Listen, David, when it a severe murder and adultery sin, he broke down from his heart and God forgave him. In the Old Testament. And we all have that sin. I have that sin and we ought not to be doing it. And sometimes we do it you know, we unknowingly we get into it. And sometimes we do it as we want to do it. Not right. It's not a license. Because after you do it when you're home. I mean when you come out of that and you're still happy and pleasure and all that. Can't wait to do it and then you got trouble. For thine is the kingdom. Uh oh. Every time you see that kingdom, that all of gongs in your head. Gong, gong, gong. Kingdom hall would be, oh, that's definitely not churchy. And they'll tell you they're not a church. The Catholic Church wants to ring in the kingdom. The Democrats want to ring in their kingdom. The Republicans want to ring in their kingdom. Russia wants their kingdom. United Nations, I mean the United uh, uh, Kingdom, they want their they want their kingdom. And the church, this is not our world, this is not our home. We're just passing through. We're just here as ambassadors. We're here as, as preachers and and proclaimers of the gospel and the power and the glory forever amen well that's the millennium going off into the eternity remember Jesus is talking to Jewish people you know the Catholic Church says you know God's all finished with the Jews we're the ones that's why the Catholic Church takes all this with Jesus. It's us, because God's all finished with that Jew. And the church indoctrinates itself as, hey, you know, America is indoctrinated itself. There are many things that the lie to see in church age is doing. It's Israel. It's Jewish. Who do you think you are? 
Oh, we call that replacement theology. And you, and you just might well just go and sit on the railroad tracks with the fastest train ever, wherever that is. Just sit there and let the train just run you over. Okay? Because, because that would need a band-aid compared to you dealing with God, saved or lost. When you, met, when you mess with God's people, we'll get hit by the, by the train. For if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So if you don't forgive, you don't get forgiven. So if you apply 1 John 1, if I confess my sins, he, he forgives me and cleanses me. Well, what do you do if you have another brother in Christ that you're not forgiving? You won't believe that guy did to me. You won't believe in that. <laughs> We're reading a Jewish context. Can you take this context and bring it over to where you, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all righteousness. Here we got words from Jesus saying, listen, if you don't forgive, God ain't going to forgive. You say, what do you say to that? I say, you go start reading Paul and see what Paul has to say about that. I'm not going to do all the work for you. But if you forgive, if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Who is the ye? If you run the Lord's prayer in the church, then the ye is you, and that's not you. The ye, the people he's speaking to again, Jewish, maybe a couple of Gentiles, but not the priority. See, when you read your Bible, you got to ask yourself many questions. You pick up, you got context in the Bible. All right, you got what they call the Lord's Prayer, what we just read. We're stopped. Well, verse 8 to verse 15. You got to say, okay, what do I do with 8 to 15? You got to ask yourself a question. Who is it written to? The Jews? The Gentiles? The church? Or the world? That's four people the Bible speaks to. And only those four. Actually, you have the devil and the angel. And the Bible speaks to them. Okay. Is it historical? Is it past? Is it something that has happened? Is it doctrinal where it is nailed down specifically? Noah built a boat, an ark. Only one man was told in the Bible to build an ark. I guess Americans can't get that. I guess American Christians can't get that. We think I can go to the Ark Encounter. You know how you know something wrong with that? Eight people got in God's Ark and a whole bunch of people paid to get into the Ark Encounter. Is it spiritual? Can you take what you read? Though it's doctrinal, Though it's historic, can you apply it to the Christians without doing the... And you can spiritually do scripture and be totally off the wall. I can preach a message to the Christians about the virgins in their oil, but that is not doctrinal and that's not historical. By no way since there is no Christian in that picture. 
Not all spiritual preaching is doctrinal. And not all doctrinal is spiritual. You got to sit down when you read a passage and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, first of all, who is he talking to? What is the contents of that? And why did Stiley tell me when I quoted that verse, I can go jump off the Empire State Building, there's no way I can do that. And live after getting hit by a, three buses and 14 cats, whatever he said. Why would he say that? What was the context of that one verse? As for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. And we got that in our house. Yeah, okay. Do you celebrate Easter and Christmas? Well, yeah. All right, you blew it because Joshua preached against Esther, Ashtoreth, and Tammuz, and Baal. And a knick-knack patty whack, and they buried the bone. In their pocket. Well, the church, churches are not perfect. That hymn, hymns are not perfect. Only the King James 1611 Bible is perfect. The King James 1611 Bible is our fact checker. Everything that is said and everything that's done in the world. Check it with the Bible and see what the Bible says. God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Right, look for that in the Bible. You won't find that there in the Bible. You'll find quite the opposite. Go check Psalm 711. 